Because if there's no excitement whatsoever, then you're probably stagnant. But if you are, you know, you are acting on your excitement, your calling, your intuition, there's a certain amount of flow to your life, to your day-to-day -day experience. But then within that, you don't feel like doing something and you feel pressured to like kick yourself in the butt to do it anyway. Or then I would say, just pause yourself and examine why do I have resistance towards this? Is it guidance? Is it just simply not exciting? Or am I avoiding something? I have a question around this still, and that's, um, I was really self-disciplined and pushing and hard on myself for 55 years. And then I realized I can't. <laughs> It's not more, not possible to proceed in this way. It was so hurtful and exhausting and just I just crashed down. And could you provide me with something like a guiding system where it is um, when it's good to push myself or kick myself in the ass? <laughs> to do something and when it's when is it just good to allow me to rest to do anything also distracting to play around to just be that is up to you um i can give some general comments mm -hmm. In general, I'd say don't push yourself to do anything unless there's an emergency situation or um, you know, a real commitment that you have to follow through on. Um, otherwise, it would sacrifice your alignment, your honor, and so forth. Or someone else's life would be, you know, uh, yeah. harmed or seriously inconvenienced. <clears throat> but in general, if you don't feel like doing something, there is some guidance in there or resistance. At that point, I would kick my own the bow and anyway, blindly, I would kick myself in the butt to relax. <laughs> and in other words, simply, I would will myself to relax, to assess my inner vibrations about the action at hand and see, well, why do I not want to do it? Is it truly not in alignment? Maybe you've made a commitment and now you no longer feel like doing it. Did mm -hmm. something shift that needs to be communicated? Um, do I have a fearful, negative, resistant idea about myself in relationship to it? That if I clean that up, I would suddenly be excited to do it? Basically, don't do anything that you don't really want to do. But get clear on why you don't want to do it. And if that's coming from a true place of guidance and excitement, or if it's coming from avoidance or negative definitions oh. that you've learned to apply to a situation, therefore it might be intimidating. Uh, you may have negative connotations to it that you can transform, you can reframe it, you can see it differently. And then suddenly you realize, oh, actually it is an extension of my excitement. It is an expression of my calling. But in general, don't push yourself to do anything. If you need to push yourself to do something, then typically you just exacerbate the misalignment. Except if you are overly lethargic in your conditioning or your nature. If you are, as in the East, they would say, kapha. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, right. You don't seem that way at all. So if your constitution isn't mostly uh, kapha, which is kind of like the heavy, the, slow, the sloth archetype, <laughs> the uh, ligger, uh, ledger, what? Ledger. Ligger, ledger, I just said it. Ledger ding. Ledger ding. Ledger ding. No. Lethargy. 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 Yes. Um, then, then, for people with that kind of constitution, which is not ideal on the spiritual path usually. Mm -hmm. It's not ideal because um, it just lacks motion, it lacks fire, it lacks the energy that you need to transform things. So it's a, it's a slow going if you're mostly kafic in nature, meaning a little bit sloth-like. 
So then for those people, I would say it's good to begin to kick yourself in the butt. Observe your diet, your patterns, maybe sleep a little bit less long, maybe get a little bit more active, get a little bit more exercise in, find something that you are excited about and be a little bit more structured about it. Just kick yourself in the butt a little bit more until that begins to develop a new momentum where you can find your excitement, you can find your sense of self. Because if there's no excitement whatsoever, then you're probably stagnant. But if you are, you know, you are acting on your excitement, your calling, your intuition, there's a certain amount of flow to your life, to your day-to-day -day experience. But then within that, you don't feel like doing something and you feel pressured to like kick yourself in the butt to do it anyway. Or then I would say, just pause yourself and examine why do I have resistance towards this? Is it guidance? Is it just simply not exciting? Or am I avoiding something? Once you clean that up, you will find that either it now is exciting to you and it no longer requires a kick in the butt, or um, it's just a matter of you just have to accept that that's actually not who you are anymore and you don't want to do that. And then you accept, hey, I'm not going to do that. That's just one example. Again, like I said, I'm going to comment in general, but yeah. you specifically, how you apply this is really up to you. Another element based on what you were sharing that I would like to make a general comment on is playfulness. Playfulness is very important. Now, you don't always have to be playful, of course, but it's an important energy to infuse uh, into your day-to-day -day experience. So you might have some, you particularly might have some conflicting ideas, and a lot of people do, about play and work or have to and want to, um, should and freedom. Those are conflicting concepts that will produce these mixed frequencies towards a lot of topics in our life or a lot of activity or actions or commitments. So again, for the most part, I would simply kick myself in the bud in the sense of pause yourself, be determined to get really clear on your relationship to these activities in your life. How are you defining it? Do you have just a pure empty channel towards that? And your guidance is letting you know, this isn't just it's appreciated, but it's not for me. I should relax more. I should just be more playful. I shouldn't go down this path of hard work. If that's guidance, perfect. But if it's something that is part of your calling and your excitement, but you have resistance to doing it, or you're just generally in a sloth-like definition state where you're like, yeah, I don't, mm, I don't want to do this. I don't, mm, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -mm. Then it's good to examine what are those core definitions that make that topic, which is actually part of your excitement, appear, and it's playful. It's essentially playful. It can be done in a playful way that gives you joy. But how am I defining it? That's making it appear to be the opposite. That's making it appear to be a should. That's making me intimidated by it. That's making me not want to look at it or not do it. So if I have resistance towards a portion of my calling, it's really helpful to see that that's because you're defining it in a negative way. And a lot of people have a lot of negative definitions applied to their calling. That's why they don't enter that flow state uh -huh. of excitement and, and activity because they have fear-based negative ideas, limiting ideas applied to what's actually part of their playfulness. Would they transmute or transform or drop those negative ideas? see through them, then suddenly the energy would return for these very things that seemed to not be exciting. Does that also apply for this spiritual journey? Because I feel the most of shoots I, that are still in my mind are like, I should meditate more, I should... Um, is strong in alignment, I should um, work harder on my causal body, I should... Let's put it this way. Let's, let's try this way. If just for a moment right now, you can just drop all shits, just for a moment. Just like pretend you don't. You don't have to meditate more. You don't have to be strong in your alignment. <laughs> You don't have to work harder on your calling or service to others. Just see if you can drop all these.
I'm not saying they won't come back, but just enter a little glimpse of relief. It's such a relief. Okay, good. Okay, so that's good. A quick snapshot. Here. Now, from that place, ask yourself, do I want to meditate more? Do I, or not even more, because that already has resistance in it. Do I want to meditate? Do I want meditation to be part of my life? Yes. Good. Do I believe I can meditate in a way that feels really natural to me? It doesn't feel forced. Can I find a flowy way to meditate? That has no should behind it. That's just a playful, joyful way to focus my attention on productive states of consciousness, on wish-fulfilling states of consciousness. Do you want meditation to be part of your life? Would you like that in a natural way? Cool. So you want to meditate. Do you want to be strong in your alignment? Would you like yes. that? Yes. Yes. Right. Lately. <laughs> <laughs> so then it's not so much about should I or, you know, Perfect. if you drop the resistance, then suddenly it's like, you know what? I want to be more meditative. And you know what? I want to be strong in my alignment. There's no should. There's no German dad forcing you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it, but, but because you have a negative association with that or definition applied to it, now you're resisting the very thing that actually otherwise you would flow into playfully. So if something seems like work, then either you're really doing something that's not in your alignment. Mm -hmm. But if you know it is in alignment with you, such as, yeah, meditating on a somewhat regular basis, in a way that's natural to you, that feels elevating, that feels uplifting, that feels clarifying, that feels emptying, that feels freeing. Now, what seemed like work just a second ago, just because of a negative definition that you felt you had to hold on to, when you drop that, now it's like, I, I shouldn't, but I, but I want to. Mm -hmm. And now it's in a playful manner. So most of the things that we term work and effort in our lives, with a little bit of dropping some definitions, can now appear to us as play mm -hmm. and the contradiction is gone so but that's better than trying to force your way through but it's also better than not making any effort to try to change your definitions like total lethargy total depression obviously is not a very pleasant state to be in <laughs> so you got to find the way to to appreciate that you are an energetic being ever and everybody is and that you do have certain passions and joys and expressions and things you want to explore and create and carve out for yourself here. You do have that. Everybody has that. You got to appreciate that that's the case. Clear out the resistance you have towards it, the shoulds, the daddy issues, the mommy issues, the insecurity complexes, not being good enough, being forced to do this when you were younger and so forth. Clear that all out and ask, but what do I want? Like, how would I want to structure my day-to-day -day life. And you'll see often, it does involve some meditation, it does involve some effort, it does involve some play, it does involve some sports, it does involve some action. For very few people, very few people actually only want to sit all day. It's not very common. <laughs> and very few people want to be only distracted all day long because otherwise they feel like they're in a should. No, people want to be focused. Yeah. They want to produce, they want to be productive, they want to be somewhat structured, they want to have a form of focus and discipline and accountability, they want that, they want to be that person. But if they have negative definitions about it, they're going to contradict that very desire and make it appear negative when it's actually what they want. But they just see it in a way, in a light, in a perspective that makes it appear negative while it's actually positive when seen from a different point of view. And how you see it is all determining for whether or not you're going to do it and feel good in doing it. So don't force yourself to do it. Don't kick yourself in the butt to go do it anyway because it's the right thing to do. No, kick yourself in the butt to sit down and get really clear on what it is you truly want. And when you're reconnected to what it is you truly want and who you know that you are and who you want to be and how you want to show up, when you can feel that, when you can see that and you can feel it and you can smell it, hopefully it smells good, <laughs> exercise after you shower and you smell yourself you feel yourself you know yourself you see yourself from that place of desire of want of connectedness to who you are your calling you're going to know what you want to do you're going to get active at some point you're going to want to get off your ass and do something fun or you're going to want to enter into a deep meditation or you're going to want to show up for a bunch of meetings or 
whatever it is. But mm. now you want it because you've cleared out the resistance. So kick yourself in the butt to clear out the resistance. Yeah. Don't kick yourself in the butt to push through all the time. Sometimes it can work. You got to find your own balance. Sometimes mm. I do it that way and it works. Sometimes it just creates more resistance. <clears throat> But also don't take the other extreme where you don't kick yourself in the butt, where you just become like you give up on life, basically. Uh -huh. So you do want to kick yourself in the butt, but you want to kick yourself in the butt to get really clear on who it is that you are and what you want and let the actions flow playfully and naturally from there. You want to reconnect to your inspiration, but you do have to kick yourself in the butt to reconnect to your inspiration because it's a shift of focus away from just kind of judging things as shoulds and like then feeling cringy and then just distracting yourself or calling it playfulness when it's really just postponement procrastination distraction which at the end of the day you're like mm -mm, and it builds up after a while you just don't feel good about yourself you're like fuck i'm not doing anything with my life that's how the mind translates it to human mind fuck i'm not doing what i'm supposed to be doing those judgments are both artificial but they also sometimes come from a true place because we don't typically act fully on what we're here to do and what we truly want to do so it's a balance we do want to kick ourselves in the butt but it's to get clear it's not to force yourself to do something you don't want to do so get clear on what you do want to do and why you don't want to do what you don't want to do and why you do want to do what you do want to do. when you get clear inspiration comes action should always flow from inspiration as much as is manageable for you well, that was helpful, Mantinho. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.